All right, now that we understand about data types, it's time to go into uh, some data cleanliness issues. So what exactly do we mean by this? Well, data be can be clean or unclean in a lot of different ways. For example, it can be inaccurate. However, there's not a lot we can do about that if it was recorded incorrectly. Um, that's more of an issue for how the data was collected in the first place. So we're going to scope that out. Data can also be perhaps a poor or invalid measure of what it's meant to represent. Um, for example, if we're measuring customer satisfaction based on repeat purchases or purchases, uh, maybe someone purchased a product like you purchased this book maybe because your instructor made you, not because you were actually satisfied or wanted this product. So there are ways to, to, to look at that and see if our measures are good, but we're going to scope that out for now too uh, because it's not something we're looking at in the understanding phase. And the data understanding phase or EDA, we're primarily looking at three things. How much missing data do we have? What are the number of unique values and what are the range of values? Missing data, we're going to talk a lot more about later. Um, it can be handled in a variety of ways, depending on why it's missing. For now, let's just get a count of missing values and a percent. The number of unique values may not seem like a cleanliness issue, at, a cleanliness issue at first, but it depends on how many unique values there should be. So, for example, let's say you're trying to understand if... Uh, I once did a project to look and see if the what hour of the day and day of the week, uh, what effect that had on the number of retweets that a, that, a, that a tweet got and the number of likes that a tweet got. Did uh, it matter if we posted it at Monday at 8 versus Thursday at 5 or something like that? Well, in that case, if the data set doesn't have an example of tweets on all seven days and on all 24 hours of the day, then it may not be, I may not be able to come up with a good prediction of which hour and which day is most important. In that case, I need to find out how many unique values there are for each of those records to see if my data is clean enough or has the proper range of values it needs for a prediction. So there's a few things we're going to look at now. The count, percent of missing values, count of unique values. And then to understand the range of the data, um, we want to get the min the lowest value, the largest value, the median or middle value, then also Q1 and Q3, these are the quartiles or the values at which 25% of the records are lower than or equal to is Q1. And then median, think of that as Q2, 50%, and then Q3 to 75%. The reason why we look at these is it shows us how spread out the data are. For example, let's say I do have tweets from all seven days of the week but, uh, or all hours of the day, but my min value could be one, max is zero, but my median is, sorry, min is one, max is 24, but my median is 21. What does that tell me? It tells me most of my data is between 21 and 24. Well, then I've got those hours overrepresented. That might be a bad thing if I'm trying to come up with a good prediction of the most important hour of the day. So looking at the range of values is good to help us understand a type of cleanliness at least. So let's learn how to do that in Tableau. So let's go back and uh, continue to use our insurance data set from the prior section. And let's get a count of missing values. All right, here's what I want you to do. If you're in this view, switch over here to our sheet view. And over here, let's go ahead and grab our first one on the list, age and take a look at some of these options here. Let me show you what we don't want, first of all. Describe. This is not what we're looking for. It uh, <laughs> sounds like it might be, but that's not it. We have uh, a variety of options. I want you to, to get most of those options. What I want you to start by doing is clicking and dragging it over here to columns or rows. It actually doesn't matter. And notice what it does. Uh, Tableau gives us a sum of age. Now you learned, if you've gone through the videos, how to uh, disaggregate data and things like that. But it's not what we're worried about right now. Right now, click on this drop down and notice that the default measure here is a sum. Change that to a count. All right, so first of all, here's the number of values of age. Let's record a few things right now. So let's get our uh, data description report back up here. There we go. And let's put in a few fields. Let's put in a. Um, count of records and we'll put in a missing missing percent or maybe I'll do like percent 
I'll just put it like that right there. And then um, I'm gonna put unique right here. Uh, in fact, maybe we'll, let's go ahead and put in, I'm gonna bring this down, insert a uh, uh, page break. And before this, I wanna make that one landscape. So I'm gonna insert right here a uh, layout breaks continuous which means I can now change the orientation of this page to landscape and the one above stays uh, like it was. Okay, down here, univariate properties. This now gives me a bit more room to add a few more columns. So missing unique, uh, let's get everything else that we were supposed to list here. Um, count of missing values, I'm adding count of values. Uh, we got those, did I miss any? Nope. Now let's add through our min through max here. So min, q1, median, I'm just gonna call it med, keep these short, we're gonna need a lot of room here. Uh, let's insert um, columns, what's the quickest way to do that? I thought, am I, I've got a table, don't I? Yeah, table design. Oh, oh, right here, here we go. Insert right, I need a few of those. q3, max, um, we're going to have some others later, so I'm going to go ahead and add a few into there to let this kind of push the width over. Okay, perfect. So, back here for age, let's go back to Tableau. All right, I can, as I hover over there, I get count of age, one, you know, 1330. I could go through here and do that for each one of these, but it's going to take me some time to go through and move them one at a time. Tableau is not the best tool to get a quick description on. But I, I want you to get familiar with it. Um, you can actually create some custom scripts in here to give you all the information you want. We will show learn a better tool later to get a quick description of these things, but now is not quite the right time. So let me show you something else we can do. Um, a very useful tool in here. Um, actually, let's go to, I think it is in worksheet. Yes, worksheet. Here we go. Uh, show cards. Let's do show summary. Perfect, okay, over here. Look at what it gives us, a few descriptive tools. Um, now this is the average of the count of age. I'm gonna go back to uh, regular old sum. Actually, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna disaggregate. Age, okay, here we go. Now I've got my count, sum, average. There's my min, max, and median. So I'm gonna grab those 1864.39. min max 18 64 39 what else does that give me let's see here uh, i got my average we're going to come back to average later we're going to need it but i can get more out of this if i come here and say in fact standard deviation first quartile there's my q1 third quartile skewness we haven't talked about these yet but we're going to want them so i'm going to put those in there for now so let me go ahead and get those quartiles, 2751. Okay, I still need unique values. Let's come back here. Uh, the way I got that before was when I changed to count, I had this count distinct. So distinct count of age. Um, it's not gonna work with the disaggregated data, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-aggregate my measures. So count distinct, right there, I hover over that, that tells me uh, the sum 47. I've got 47 unique ages. So I'll put that in right here. I still need missing and missing percent. All right, let's come back to that in one second. I'm going to go back to disaggregate or disaggregating data and changing count. Um, there we go. Okay, next. Tableau assumes that you don't care about missing data, which for a dashboard, we really don't. We only want to work with the data that we have. However, when it comes to modeling and prediction, it's very important to know how much data is missing and uh, we can actually predict or impute data. We'll get to that later. But for now, what we need to use or do is create a calculated field. So I'm hoping you've been through a uh, prior chapter on getting started in Tableau and you've gone through each of these, including the calculations uh, right here, and you know you're familiar with creating calculated fields. Um, if not, it might be a good time to pause and go back and take a look or see if you can just follow along with me right now. 
So here's what I'm going to do. Come down here to measures. We're going to right click, create calculated field. I'm going to call this missing age. Now down here is where we can use the Tableau uh, built-in code language. I'm not sure what you want to call it. Then here's what we're going to do. We're going to use their language and say sum. Uh, open that up. And we're going to use an if statement is null expression. And then we're going to plug in age. And then, then, if it's null, give us a one. Else, give us a zero. And function, I think I got it. Yep, valid, apply, okay. All right, so rather than pull out here, just go back to the data source and take a look here. And it basically built it as a field in here for all of them. Uh, this says there's zero missing values of age. This was kind of a pain painful way to count up missing values in Tableau. You'll learn a, a, a quicker way later on in a different language or in a different uh, tool. But for now, I'm just going to go back into my description report, put zero missing. Therefore, uh, if I had done this in Excel, I could just made this a function. But in this case, I know it's 0%. I know with this particular data set, it's very clean, which is not normal. But all these happen to have no missing data, so I'm going to put those in. All right, what I want you to do next is pause this video and go ahead and calculate these metrics for the remaining numeric features, uh, BMI, children, and charges, and then come on back. Okay, uh, I'm going to assume that you've done that or you didn't do anything at all and you just waited and you're going to copy the numbers that I have here. Either way, that's just fine. Let's go ahead and move on. So what do we do with these categorical features? Sex, smoker, and region. Let's see what we can do. We'll head back here to Tableau. Let's bring one of them in, region. So it gives us this nice little table here, shows us the unique values, and it doesn't know what to put in here to summarize for those values because it's text. Well, I can look at this and see there's four options very easily, and I could, uh, oops, I could just go back here and plug in four for region. Um, and by the way, we know smoker is just yes, no, and same with sex is just male, female in this particular data set. However, sometimes you're going to get a lot of values, more than you can easily sit there and just eyeball count. So what do you do? You come here to this pill, click the drop down arrow, and go to measure. We have a few options. So what is min and max with text data? Well, if we go to min, it gives us northeast. Okay, how about max? When we do that, it gives us southwest. Well, maybe you figured out that all it does is sort them alphabetically and give us the first one in the alphabet for min and the last one for max. Is that useful? Probably not in this data set at all, but maybe there will be some context you can use that. But what is useful are count and count distinct. So count, uh, I've already told you there's no missing data in this data set. We have that, but let's go to count distinct. So if there was a lot of data, this gives us a quick bar chart count. Here we can see how many uh, unique values there are. That's what we mean by distinct. So uh, let's call it good for now uh, with this video and let's uh, move on to assumptions in the next.